What you're looking at right here is a 4100 US dollar wheel with some grippy tires. But included in the purchase of every wheel is a lithium battery, an electric motor, and a fancy computer made of magic that allows you to hit speeds upwards of 80 kilometers an hour. So today, we're gonna test this one-wheeled machine and see if it's any good. Now this video is not sponsored in any way, but I would still like to mention the kind folks at EVs. They're a group of passionate people in the PEV space who just happen to have a store. So if you're in the market for a PEV or PEV accessories, go to evs.com and use my coupon code Lando underscore cycle at checkout. I receive a small kickback, which helps to support the channel. You receive excellent customer service and the potential for a discount or free swag. So I call that a win-win. Just in case you've been living under a rock, this is the Veteran Sherman S, which is the successor to the original Veteran Sherman. Now, it has about the same watt hours and drivetrain, but that's just about it. Other than that, it's a complete ground up rebuild. It has a lot more metal on it, and it's a lot more refined. It also has suspension made by Fast Ace. They make the suspension for the Suron e bike. Unfortunately, one more thing has also changed, and that is the weight. It's gone up over 20 pounds, and I can say that you can absolutely feel the extra weight. I've been riding the S22 a lot, and getting off this and jumping onto the S22, it feels like a little toy. So yeah, the weight is there on the Veteran Sherman S. Price comparison for this wheel is around the Inmotion V13 EX30 Master Pro kind of range, which is very expensive. In fact, you can buy brand new small motorcycles for that price. So this is definitely something you want to heavily consider before you purchase. I definitely recommend going to EVs and touching it and feeling it for yourself. One thing I've been using non-stop is the kickstand. See, it doesn't fall over. The V11 kickstand, if you look at it wrong, it will fall over. You could probably even blow it over. See, this one you can't do that. So I like this kickstand. I think everyone should have a kickstand like this. Now, Leeper Kim loves to make Casio style displays for some reason, which is a bit odd seeing how expensive this wheel is. I wish it was like a color TFT display, but hey, this is what we get. And it actually does work well. I also like that it's up uh, towards the front of the wheel because when you're sitting, you can actually see everything and you don't have to look way down when you're standing like on the S22. So yeah, it's functional and it does its job, but I wish it was just a little bit more premium. The acceleration feels very Sherman-y. If you're used to riding an OG Sherman, this should feel no different. I would say it's very similar in acceleration performance. Because of that weight, I have also noticed the braking to be significantly more difficult on this wheel. I think you have to put a lot more weight into it. I believe the braking is there, but yeah, you have to muscle it a lot more. It's not gonna stop quickly for you unless you really try. Idling on this wheel needs to be very slow and methodical. Nothing happens fast on this wheel, which can be a good thing and a bad thing depending on how you ride. The headlight is redesigned from the original one, but it's still quite similar in the way it looks. It has a little face, it looks like it's looking at you. Hello! In fact, it makes my eye autofocus on my camera think it's a face, so it is kind of facey looking. But yeah, I did my best to test it, but it's been daylight the whole time, so I Threw it in my buddy's garage next to the V11. As, as you can see, it looks brighter than the V11, I think. It's got more of a spread than the V11, I think, but uh, I can't really tell. The trolley handle on this wheel is a lot like the V11 slash V12 style. It doesn't go hide inside the chassis. It's just kind of out and about. And it's rather flimsy, unfortunately. It does work, but it's not my favorite. I'm able to get my helmet through, which is nice, because I like to do that when I'm shopping. I put the helmet through the trolley handle and then I can just hang on to this and it's all one piece. But yeah, I feel like they could have made this metal and it would have been a lot better. But it is in like the center of gravity. That's really the most important thing for stability. And since we're on trolley handles, we might as well talk about the seat because it's attached to the trolley handle. That's it right there. Just a little bit of squishiness on top of your trolley handle. It's not my favorite. I like the S22 seat a lot more. It's wider. This one's quite narrow and very firm. 
but it's a seat. You can sit on it. If you're one of those kind of people that like to sit, it's there. Let's talk about the fast A suspension. I have about 150 kilometers on this wheel now, and so far the suspension has been flawless. It is very smooth, no notching or hesitation anywhere. It feels very refined. It has preload and rebound adjustment controls. This has the medium spring, which is 62 pounds, I believe. I found it to be bottoming out quite a lot if on regular preload. So I turned it up a bit and it's been nice, but definitely soft. So if you want to do jumps or anything like that, and you're about my weight, which is 180 to 200 pounds, I would highly suggest going for the more stiff suspension. We can talk about the tire, which is the Kenda. 262 same one on the original Sherman so no news there. I really like this tire In fact, I like it so much that I put it on my Kingsong s22 and it made it way better So it's a good on-road tire, but it's also a good off-road tire The battery on this machine is 3600 watt hours and a hundred volts The BMS I believe is more simple than something on like the InMotion Challenger So I don't think you can see individual cell batteries, which I find unfortunate I think that is a feature that should be on every wheel, so please Leaper Kim, make that a feature. So if you're the kind of person that likes to live on the edge and have slippery pedals, then these are perfect because I was sliding basically the whole time on them. Idling, off-road, they don't have any grip. They have these little nubbins, but they don't really do anything. So if you actually like grippy pedals, you gotta change them out. I know people were complaining that these like, this clicking mechanism is no good. I would say that's the least of your concerns if you want grippy pedals. Get rid of these things and get aftermarket ones. Another potential downside is the chassis itself. Now there's not a lot of structure between the two packs and the two sides of the fork. Mostly just your upper part here. So it could cause some torsion flexing. Now I'm not sure if that's actually going to cause problems, but I thought I would mention it. There are two charge ports on this wheel, which are located on the very front right here. I think you'd have to probably put the charger through the handle. It's a little bit awkward, but not nearly as awkward as the S22 one. And I believe it comes with a five amp charger. But yeah, if you get two of them, you can charge it twice as fast. I'm not sure the charge time, but uh, I'm sure you could charge this thing in under three hours if you wanted to. So let's sum this thing up. To me, it's like a Mercedes G-Wagon. It's big, it's heavy, it's comfortable, it's refined, it's expensive. It's also fast, but it is sluggish and it's definitely not something you wanna take on the weekends bashing. So you have to really figure out what kind of riding you're doing and if this is the wheel for you. But it is a really good wheel, but I don't think it's gonna be for everyone. So that is my review of the Veteran Sherman S. Hope you guys liked it. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you guys in another video. Peace.